Hi, Susan. How are you? Hi, Hi Seal. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. It's starting to warm up here. I think it's a little warmer where you are because I'm still wearing a sweater. <laughs> it was really chilly this morning. I okay. Had a, a jacket and a sweatshirt to walk the dogs and it's just uh, different. It was I so just, warm and we got, just got back from vacation and I was out in the sun and yes. the beach and it was so nice. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm really anxious for warmer weather. So when I wake up and it's still in the forties here, yeah. I'm a little disappointed, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm really looking forward to this conversation because this is not something I've made a lot of. And when I've had, I've really struggled with it. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell us what our topic for today is? Our topic is tiebacks. And just to be uh, general for anyone that's new, a tieback is a, something that holds a drapery back to one side. Mm -hmm. And they can be practical, like an outdoor drapery where you have to have them tied back. Uh, mm -hmm. The wind will blow them away. Um, or decorative and beautiful and, and shaped and banded and trimmed and... Mm -hmm. and incorporating holdbacks and tassels and you know they can really be over the top yes um so they can be really beautiful and it also is a way to create a different look with your drapery um, yes you know having it swagged pulled back or even cinched up tight at the top you know mm -hmm. you can all these different looks right so, so, um we don't see as many tiebacks as we did in the past in preparing for this uh, program, I went and looked at some of my older books because the books from the, the 60s and 70s, the 40s, the 50s, the, yeah. the 1790s. Yes. <laughs> That's funny. And there was just a question in the library and the forum about um, period style uh, yeah. window treatments and tiebacks were much more popular, but I think like everything else, they're going to come back. <laughs> and I will tell you that I've had them in my own house a number of times for the simple reason that every window in my house has a heat vent directly underneath oh, it. Right, right. So if I want any kind of a longer window treatment, I need to be able to pull it back. If I want, if I want warmth and cool air in my house, I need to be able to get the window treatments off of them. So I think they're functional, but they can be, as you said, over the top. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, um, because we don't make them very often, when we get an order for them, we have to scramble and go find instructions. Yes. Because it's been so long since you made one. Exactly. And, uh, and you're taken aback by the tie back. <laughs> so, <laughs> so hopefully this podcast will help a little bit. But it is 30 minutes. So I'm going to hone in on my favorite um, styles. Okay. And, uh, there's certainly, you know, lots of um, different ways to make tie backs, many, many, many right ways. And I'll also share a couple resources. Um, okay. Don't let me forget at the end. Um, I, okay, I won't. And we are recording this in video as well as audio. This will be on uh, the YouTube channel because this is obviously a pretty visual conversation, a pretty visual topic. Yeah, and I'm standing got, up. I'm going to hold up. Stuff. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and we got some great questions from our workroom accountability and mentoring group. So we're going to use those questions, um, especially because since some of them are newer in the industry, they have not had the opportunity to make them. So it was interesting because I found that I had a lot of the same questions that they had, even though one, I've already made some, yeah. and two, I have been in the industry for a while, but I haven't made a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And so when I was making them for myself, I could experiment and adjust, but I haven't made them in a while. So these are all questions I would absolutely come back with. Okay, great, well, let's start. All right. so because we want to be planners. Um, <laughs> let's start with the pre-planning part. How do you determine how large to make the tiebacks based on how full the draperies are? Mm -hmm. Is there a formula? Mm, well, generally you want tiebacks to be at least 18 inches long for a single width panel okay. and then add on from there. But there really isn't a formula that that I use. And some people might say they have, you know, set formula. Mm -hmm. um, so the larger the drapery, you know, your tie back may be 24 inches long or 30 inches long. Remember, you're folding them in half. Right. So a 30 inch long tie back is going to be 15 inches mm -hmm. of tie back holding back the drapery. The best way I have to determine the length is when the dra drapery on with the drapery on the work table is lay it out pull it up to what you want it to be and measure and see what looks good. Or when you're measuring the window, um, drop a, 
um, sausage bead weight, mm -hmm. or cord, and, and kind of see what you want that look to be. You even can do that with a scale drawing. Right. Yeah. So, so you can really get a good idea of a size for a tie back just with a scale drawing. Okay. If you're in doubt, make it bigger. Okay. Just uh, it's better, better for it to be a little big than. I agree with that. Although there, there's some sneaky things you can do on the back if you make them too small, but it's better. Right. To make them and, there, and there's some sneaky things you can do on the back if you make them too big. <laughs> <laughs> but it's always better to go bigger. I agree. Uh, and that's just on the length of them. Now the, right. the thickness or the width or the depth, mm -hmm. um, it really depends on the look that you're going for. And like with other window treatments, um, the taller the draperies are, the bigger you might want the tie back to be. If you're doing a little cafe curtain or a little small um, curtain on a little tiny window that's tie back, you might want a little smaller tie back. Right. So it's right. all custom. Right. And, and that having been said, there are tie backs that are cords and tassels. And, and they can be on a very long window treatment. Yeah. But yeah. And also if, if you can install the drapery and then hold back with a soft tape measure or use some poster board or mm -hmm. heavy paper uh, to cut out some shapes and, and to show your customer how that's going to look, if they're okay with waiting until the drapery. Right, right. Or if you can install, if you have room in your workroom too. A lot of people do I already have the right. ability to hang up a drapery in their workroom and then they can send some photos to the customer about. Right about the shape and the size. Okay, so how far down the drape do you attach them and is there preferred position? Oh gosh, there's so many different styles you can create with where you place the tie back. Mm -hmm. I have a drawing that I'll put on the um, blog okay. uh, to show the difference. So after the this is recorded, um, not only will we have the YouTube video, but uh, if people go to my blog at workroomtech.com, they can see um, the drawing of placing the tie back, the same size tie back at three different levels. Okay. When it's up high, it, it can create this really pretty uh, shape. It also right. opens up more view and more light. Yes, it does. There's more window available. And placed sort of in the center is more traditional. You know, mm -hmm. the way, you know, maybe not quite mid midway, just below midpoint. And then you can have a tie back that's really low. So you get this really long, right. saggy swoop and they're really close to the floor or close to the windowsill. Um, I've got some examples in some uh, older books. Also, I was researching books. I'll put mm -hmm. a photo up of one where it's really, really close to the bottom. And it's kind of okay. cute. And uh, then, then you can, you can also play around with where you want them to be. Also how you angle the tie back. So you can have it going more straight across mm -hmm. or you can angle it down a whole lot so that you have, you know, more of a you have more dimension. Tie. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's uh, the, the hard thing is get them the left one and the right one, the same. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you're measuring from the floor up to the bottom of the tie back on the left and the right. And then you yes. have to all the fabric dressed the same. So that's and make sure it's attached at the right place on the right, side right. of the wall. <laughs> Um, I will also, I, there's always a link to the blog in the show notes. Okay. So if you're listening, whether you're on a mobile device or listening on the computer, you can always click, click directly to it. So you can continue to listen if you're listening on a device and look at the pictures at the same time. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the construction okay. of tie backs. How do you like to make them? Well, uh, I'd like to make shaped tie backs. So, um, Back in the earlier years of my career, tie backs were always just a rectangle piece. Yes. Uh, you have a piece of fabric, you put a seam in it, you make sure the seam is on the back, you slip a piece of buckram in it, you sew up each end. Mm -hmm. it's on. Done. Then um, I discovered the books of Lady Caroline Ray and Mary oh. Day and uh, uh, all the, you know, the UK um, tie back makers. And wow. Okay, that's how you make tie backs, right? So, so ever since then, I've made shaped tie backs, and um, the sort of a boat or canoe shape mm -hmm. is a really good uh, curve, um, a V shape, and um, I'll just hold up. A, this is a, a curved tie back. So when it's, you know, that's yeah, a I think that is one of my favorites, and I think that that's a beautiful. Looks cute shape. when I bring it in close. <laughs> <laughs> I love where the bird is positioned on it. Well, and that's another thing to think about. Um, what do you want on the front? Because that 
that side's not going to show right when it's installed on that side of the window um so what do you put on the other side so, right you know got to think about those things too and sometimes if i have a pattern that i it doesn't give me a good left and right like this bird would not look good on the other tie back. that's what i was just saying. Actually plan something right here mm -hmm. so like you get half of it you'll have a pattern match you'll have half of it on this side and half right. on the other side so you have to play around with those things it's like what everything we make the pre-planning can take almost as long as the fabrication <laughs> it took the words right out of my mouth i i we've moved on from from planning to construction but you have to think about all of these things and you have to allow extra yardage for them because yeah. you have to cut out like cutting out pillows um using the pattern motif mm -hmm. the shaped tie backs also keep the drapery from being crushed yes and that makes it look better right um it's sort of like um it's cradling right so like I cradling love that expression. <laughs> yes yes i love that so you know you want to have it at the drapery laying in there softly and not okay. tight and and having it curved helps with that and adding stiffeners and batting and um making it a thicker construction also helps with that okay so you do use batting in your tie backs yes and uh fusible fleece is one of my favorites okay uh, so um you can buy this uh at our suppliers at wholesale suppliers you can find a fusible batting or fusible fleece um also uh like palon or you know some of those popular companies uh, mm -hmm. would have them like at a joanne store okay um, so i keep fusible fleece on hand i buy it by the you know whole bolt of it and it comes in really handy for all kinds of things sometimes lining cushions or pillows making placemats right and um actually making tie backs is can be very similar to making placemats okay all right so i like having fusible fleece so this first tie back i'm showing you has face fabric, the fusible mm -hmm. fleece applied to the face, um, a lining piece, and welt cord. Okay. And it's made just like making a pillow. Mm -hmm. um, so you have the fusible fleece ironed on, sew your welt cord on, sew your back on, and then add some rings. And I'm going to talk more about the rings and installing a little bit later, but this just okay. has Roman shade rings. Okay, so, perfect. All right, should all tie backs be curved? And how do you deal with the leading edge and the return of the drapes? Ah, so um, no, no, they don't all have to be curved. You know, it depends on if you're uh, working with an interior designer, they might have a specification or, or a picture they wanna follow mm -hmm. or a customer might have a picture. Um, if, if someone just says, I want tie backs and they haven't given you any direction, I would make it curved. Okay. And you would start off by making a pattern on pattern paper. Okay. Which is, you can make the whole tie back, or you can just make a pattern of half the tie back. <laughs> <laughs> I like that scallop. <laughs> yeah, that one's pretty. Um, and let's see, uh, what was the other question? Uh, is, there was somebody uh, deal with the leading edge and right. return. Um, when you have a firm shaped tie back it's much easier to arrange that leading edge right than attractive you can, you can fold it in so that the lining is not exposed yeah and yeah. also the tighter the smaller the tie back in relation to the fullness is going to affect how the leading edge mm -hmm. um, is, is handled so all of that is something you have to dress and do on site okay and you line all of your yeah um Timebacks. okay you if you're doing and i'm going to show a construction method using uh stiffener and it's sort of like making a soft cornice okay you could not line it and just have the skirt text the white skirt text showing with some gimp braid around it but i still put a piece of lining in there okay and do you use micro cord for better edges um, on the thicker tie backs it'd be a little tricky to use the micro cord i'd probably would recommend a small well cord instead, okay. like a four thirty second or five thirty second size okay. well. Okay, so you apply the fleece to the front, sew the well cord around it, sew the front hold, to back, size out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so important. Are there? <laughs> 
<laughs> I said it was like making a pillow, but don't put a zipper in it. <laughs> no, no, don't. <laughs> but you do have to turn it right side out. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And give it a good press with your iron and close the hole with um, hand sewing or, or a fusible product and you're okay. done. That's probably the fastest one to make. Okay. And it's, it's um, that fusible fleece does give it really nice body. Mm -hmm. um, it's not as stiff as some of the other ones I'm going to show you, but it makes, you know, it kind of stands up on its own. Okay. Which is really nice. Okay. So what other um, interfacings are you mentioned? Um, Skirtex and uh, Peltex mm -hmm. and the things we can buy at the, the box stores. Do you have a no-sew method? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite. It's fun to make. Um, okay. And that would be using a heavy stiffener like Skirtex or Peltex. Uh, Skirtex okay. is what's used in upholstery skirting. Uh, and you can find that at a lot of our suppliers. So Peltex would be something if you're not buying it um, from a wholesale supplier, uh, you can find Peltex. Okay. And um, both of them are these really stiff polyester, uh, I guess, I don't know if they're woven or non-woven. I'm not the sure. One, the one thing I like about Peltex and they, our drapery suppliers don't have this and maybe they'll start thinking about carrying it. Um, I've ordered um, the bolts of this off fabric.com. Mm -hmm. so I can find it by the bolt. Um, but the Peltex has, you can get it. It's, um, let me look at my notes here. It's 70 Peltex 71F and the F is for fusible. So okay. one has the fusible on it. Okay. So that saves time because with out the fusible, you, then you would have to use an iron or infusible web. Okay. Which you can certainly do. Mm -hmm. and, and that's like you're making a soft cornice. Um, you can buy the fusible web by the yard and, you know, cut out what you need and put it on. But this already has the fusible on it. Oh, that's so a nice really, one. really like the Peltex 71F. Okay. Um, you'll cut that to the finished size, iron it onto the back of your face fabric, cut around the shape. Oh, here we go a little half made tie back here. Um, cut around the shape. Oh, okay. Leave enough to turn under. Glue under the edges. Mm -hmm. And then if you want welt cord, now this could be a tie back just like that. All by itself, right. Welt cord. But if you want welt cord, then you're going to glue that welt cord right on that edge all the way around like that. Mm -hmm. So I like gluing it with the tie back face up. So I'm gluing it and I can see how that looks yes. right along that edge. Yeah, so you are really tight to it and, and it looks and uniform. I, I'll put a picture up, I stab the pens uh, into the work table yeah. and mm -hmm. just you know do it look before you break for lunch or at the end of the day. And then when you come back, it's all on there nice and tight. Right. And then add a piece of lining. So this is where I was talking about you could you could possibly omit the lining and just put gimp braid right over. Yeah, go. you could. Right over. Yeah. Like and then, and then, you know, the white is the white. Right. But I like to put a piece of blackout lining. And the reason I use blackout is because we don't need to black out the tie back, but it doesn't fray. Yes. So, so you can cut it exactly. Yeah. You can trim it and cut it. It's nice and clean. It also adds more body. Yeah. So, yeah. Even more that's body true. to the tie back. So then that, after that's on, then you just glue your gimp braid. Okay. Cut edge if you want to. Mm -hmm. And uh, that gives you. And it looks really pretty like that. Yeah. That gives you a really pretty. Now I got my pieces falling out here. <laughs> but, and it looks nicely finished. I always feel like I want everything to look as nice from the back as it does from the front oh, when it's possible. Go. Yeah. So that, gives you that really nice, thick, firm shape on the front here. So that's what cradles your drapery to keep your drapery from being crushed. Okay. If you had a really heavy drapery and you're really worried about it, you could put um, a seal of wire or shaper in. Oh, there that's true. That if you really wanted to. Yeah. But um, I think I've never had to do that. But that's okay. Awesome. Yeah, really, maybe you were working with a fabric, you thought it needed a little extra. Um, so love that method. Okay. How do we then attach them? Do you use plastic rings or do you make tabs out of the same fabric? And how do you attach a hook in the wall? 
Oh, well, the rings, um, you can use shade rings. Okay. Shade rings. Those are the little brass ones. Mm -hmm. And the key is on the front, you want the shade ring to hook into the hook. And I might have a little hook here. I can demonstrate. Here we go. So you want that one to hook to the wall, right? Right. But you don't want to see a hook here. I see oh, what you did there. Oh, you put the hook to the back. So the hook is in a, a little bit of distance. Right. So that's, that's so smart. Sure, you make sure the front doesn't show. And then that hugs up to the wall, which is yes. Right. Now that is if you're using um, a hook that's not, you know, super attractive, like the one I held up, you know, little, yeah, like, little L shape. I don't really recommend these or cup hooks or tenor hooks unless they're going into wood, like right? Into the window frame. I right. wouldn't they don't stay wall. No. Right. right. <laughs> you also can find, you know, like little decorative hooks, which mm -hmm. are nice, um, like that. And sometimes you're incorporating maybe a holdback. So you right. would want to have a loop. You'd want to have something like a loop sewn in that can go over the post before right. the holdback is screwed on. Okay. And uh, that works. That works pretty well too. All right. And those you would definitely do in the same fabric, even though they're hidden behind the medallion, you'd still want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So a couple more, I'm holding up these tie backs. So I'll show you a couple more. This is also um, a tie back made so. with the Paltex. Okay. Um, and it's, you know, shaped with a uh, banding all the way around that shape. Really uh, pretty. And, and yeah, it is, I'll have to stand back there. It is really pretty. Um, and then that has the Gimp braid. So it's just okay. like I showed you before. Mm -hmm except it's two layers. So I made two tie backs. I made okay. one. <laughs> and then you cut one smaller, another piece of a stiffen or smaller and applicate that on top. And they're okay. all, all glued together. Okay. But that gives you the ability to create a shape with um, that reveal of color all the way. Yes. And then you could add welt cord around the edge as well. Mm -hmm. Just like I showed before. Right. I really love this style and um, that's really pretty. And this is a good one to do if you're doing a like V shapes. I've made tie backs before that were more like a, like a, uh, a, a V with mm -hmm. sharp cutouts. Oh, okay. And so it's much easier to make this style tie back than to try to sew it and turn it right sides out. And right. uh, so I love, love this method for tie backs. And then the, um, Last one I'll show, and I'm going to show, let me show a few products here that I have here. It's so weird doing a podcast where people can see me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> There's um, Dufix, uh, if you're uh, to the trade and you can order through Dufix, they have a couple of products. One is tie back lining. Ooh. And this is actually a fusible fleece okay. on a ground cloth. Okay. So you, you're, you're applying the cloth side to the fabric and then you have that fleece behind there. Mm -hmm. so, um, the first one I showed with fusible fleece, this would be a great product to use for yeah. that. And uh, the number is 2103, no, product number 022210. Okay. And Susan, you mentioned when you first started, in case anyone is really new, I've seen a few people asking where they can buy Dufix products. Yeah. There is only one place to buy them and that's from Dufix. You can't get them from any of our other suppliers. So just look for, and I'll put the link to Dufix in the show notes, but you, don't waste your time looking for them anywhere else. <laughs> it is the only place you can get them. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Home Sewing Depot has a few Dufix products um, okay. for the um, Blackout Room and Shade, the Black Room Fold Blackout Room and Shade that I teach, um, but there's other products you can use. Um, so just, just ask and I'll yeah. share it with you. Um, and there's also, Dufix has some, these really heavy stiffeners that are made for like soft cornices and okay. uh, things like that. And they're really strong, but they have one that does have a fleece on one side. And this is a really, you hear that? Oh, it really it's looks stiff, yeah. That's fusible side. And then you have um, the fleece side. So that's okay. also an option. That's not the one that they 
uh, say to use for tie backs, but but there it is. Um, well, you could. You could. Um, traditionally, uh, buckram was used. This is wide width buckram from Rolly <laughs> Company. You can hear that? Yes, you can so, hear it. Um, when you're using something like Peltex or Skirtex, it's not not as crinkly and crunchy. <laughs> But I had a, um, a how-to, and I wanted to follow it just like was in the how-to, um, because I love to be able to refer people to uh, instruction. So um, this is the book, the Home Furnishings Workbook okay. by Maureen Whitemore, who I got to meet when I went to the UK, and she's so fabulous. Aww. But, uh, so hi, Maureen. Um, and she has instructions in here for making tiebacks on page starting on page 115 okay and uh she also gives some um guidelines for sizes so oh awesome and she has some drawings of uh different styles of tie backs mm -hmm. and her instructions uh call for um making the front piece sewing on the welt cord grading the seams pressing the edges to the back and then mm -hmm. hand sewing okay so i used the um buckram so this is more traditional i used the um wide width buckram to make this tie back okay and let's do the side with the bird on it okay and um haven't finished hand sewing it yet so <laughs> there are the pens there okay. but the lining is all um hand sewn on and you know it makes a beautiful traditional tie back now it does have that buckram that you can yeah a little crunchier if you if you crease it you can steam it out okay but the skirtex and peltex doesn't seem to crease as bad okay you know, as the woven buckram does so uh, i would probably would prefer that one okay but this is a good traditional way but that would still be very pretty you can create that rounded shape that the drapery fits down into right and um, I know we're running out of time. Let me show you the other books that I had that I wanted to share. Okay. And again, there will be links to all of these books in the show yeah. notes. Um, and that is uh, the Soft Furnishings book. By Terrence Conran. Yes. Okay. And there's um, six tie back examples in here. Ooh. And so there's everything from plated to bows, uh, the shaped tie backs, the V-shaped tie back. So it's really... That's a super tutorial. Okay. I really had a hard time finding tieback tutorials. Every book mentions tiebacks, but, but not how to make them. Not how to how to <laughs> it. And then the last one, shameless plug, um, my book has tieback instructions on page seventy-three, okay. and that the one with the fusible fleece that I showed at the beginning of the podcast today. Okay. So if you don't already have a copy of that, I, I will do this for Susan. It is a fabulous book and I refer to it frequently. In fact, we were talking about it on one of the podcasts the other day and someone was trying to get the, um, the name of it out. And I looked over to my right and I thought, why am I looking here? This is my office. The book is downstairs in the <laughs> workroom where it needs to be. <laughs> it's also when you're installing, um, Rolly Company has something that's called a tie back picture and mirror hook. Okay. And um, it's uh, product number WH30, and you can attach that with a number six screw. Okay. It's a hook that has a hole in the middle that you can screw to the wall. Okay. Um, and you can also find knobs, cabinet knobs, you know, hooks at, at uh, lots of hardware suppliers. Right. So there's lots of options for that. Yeah, you really can be as creative as you want with them. If you don't want the fabric to crush, let's say you have your, your tie back and we talked about how this area on a stiff tie back doesn't crush the front, but what about where it comes and meets at the back? Right. You can get product um, from Rolly Company and it's called a uh, concealed tie back holder. Okay. Item number HLB20 that holds this out oh okay so it keeps the end separate. the return of the drapery okay so this this comes around and it hooks into the front part of it and then this hooks into the back part of it and then the drapery okay. writing it so it's a plastic um, piece and it does have an adjustable return on it okay so, so that is one thing you can use to keep that space and then um, yesterday when I was walking out the door, <laughs> I was like, Roger, wait, I have this idea. <laughs> 
<laughs> let's find an L bracket. Um, so I made this little, uh, I only had small L brackets. So I would probably use, you want to use an L bracket that is the size of the drapery return. Okay, perfect. Okay. And I don't know how am I going to show this? Um, this would be installed to the wall. Okay. Turn it um, towards so that they can see a side view of it. Like turn it um, so that the L bracket is like this. Oh. Flip it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I can't even tell you how to turn it. It does. <laughs> I know, it, and it is backwards on the screen I'm looking at. So yes. if I go left, it's yes. really but anyway. So See, I, and that's adorable. So it's actually a little. You could. This would have to be attached, right? Like, sew, sew it on through the holes in the L bracket. But you make right. this little cover, and that would be installed to the wall. Yes. All to the wall. And I put a button on it. Now that button doesn't match. Remember I said I was doing this. Let's walk out. <laughs> but then um, you would bring your tie back around and, and hook that. I think that's button. perfect. And again, you would, it would help to avoid the crush. Right. So this, this, this edge would be behind the drapery. Mm -hmm. You know, only the button would show from, from the side. So that's just an idea. You know, right. we can stand on that. Anybody that wants to come up with a, you know, improve on this, right? Go for it. And yeah, uh, please do and share it with us. us. <laughs> um, All right. Yeah, so it's pricing. <laughs> yeah, uh, and and uh, we are going to go over a little bit, but we cannot end this without talking about the pricing. Oh, and there's one more thing. Okay, this is going to be oh. minutes of workroom tech. Okay, was adjusting okay. adjusting the drapery. Oh right yes, now. yes. When you when you use a tie back and you bring the fabric around, then the leading edge gets shorter. Right. That's just the way it goes. Um, so you might want to pre-plan depending on how tight you're pulling it back. If you're pulling it up a lot of widths up high and tight, mm -hmm. you're going to have like a jabot or a cascade effect right. at the bottom of your drapery. So you might want to put a facing on your lining. Mm -hmm. Um, you might want to encase the lining in a hem that is, you know, eight inches or so, whatever you need to see. Mm -hmm. uh, you might want to put well cord around the bottom, or you might want to make the drapery where it ends level. Right. And to do that, you have to make your leading edge longer to accommodate for that. And right. the only way you can figure that out is by draping a cord to where the tiebacks are going to be, let it fall to the floor and then measure that. Right. So, and if you do that, you have less ability to play with it on site. You have to be very precise with that method. And yeah, and it's ask not, me it's how not, I know that. <laughs> it's not one that you can, you know, let up and down. So right. it's be put in place permanently and right. put there. Um, yeah. So, but you can do that, and it really is a beautiful look. It absolutely is. Okay. So let's talk about pricing. <laughs> As you can see by what I've shown today, tiebacks are very time consuming. Mm -hmm. um, I equate the time to making pillows. Okay. So a knife edge pillow would be like the first one I showed um, or making placemats, things like that. It does take a lot of time. So you sort of need to think about what your hourly rate is and um, use that plus your materials. Mm -hmm. That are the skirt text, the buckram, the fusible web, right. the lining and interlining. Um, sure, we have scrap piles of all that stuff. You know, right. I, when I needed a piece of black outlining, I reached under the table, but still, you know, I'd purchased that originally. Yeah. So just for um, reference, and this, your timing might be different, but just in the tiebacks I made for the podcast today, um, the one sewn with the fusible fleece, which is the very first one I showed, the cutting, planning, um, sewing took 25 minutes. Okay. And usually tiebacks are in pairs. Right. So <laughs> double that. So plan <laughs> Unless for it's a one way. <laughs> <laughs> so plan for an hour for a pair of tiebacks. Um, the no sew tieback made with Peltex lining and gimp, this one that I just glued everything together, took 20 minutes. Okay. So that one is, um, you know, a little faster. But you yeah, have more expensive. I was just about to say, but you have more product in there. Yeah. Right, right. Um, and then the two piece tie back, which was this one. Um, so I'm making, actually making two of those shaped tie backs, gluing them together, adding the welt cord and the gimp braid and lining. Um, that took 40 minutes. Okay. Each? Each. Each. Okay. 
They're all each. I only made one. Okay. For, really? For the, <laughs> <laughs> for the imaginary windows that we're talking for about? Imaginary draperies. <laughs> right, right. So and, but that, uh, that's a really good point, Susan, is you, you made one and that's how long it took. Yeah. Yeah. And then the one I made that has the hand sewn lining, um, I haven't quite finished it, but I sewed hand sewed half of that. So I know uh, 35 minutes. Okay. Um, they're not an afterthought. They should be priced like any other part of the finished right. window treatment. Um, a lot of planning and thinking and, and getting it right. And what a huge difference a beautiful, correct, you know, thoughtful tie back makes than just a strip of fabric. And, and yeah, gathering up and yanking it to the side. I totally agree with you. And it's one of those things, there are so many things we're seeing a little bit of come back. Let me, let me rephrase that. There are things we're seeing come back. A few workrooms have done swags that they haven't done yeah. in a while. Yeah. So there Our are mistake. some things that we're making that we haven't made in a while. And when this, when these are well done, I think they're absolutely beautiful. I think they make a statement in the room and just the softness of the draped fabric is so beautiful to me that I, I love the opportunity to make them again for somebody. The most common uh, tiebacks for me now in my career are on bed drapery. Mm -hmm. I almost always have those tie back. Okay. So, and just think about that. It's right there where you just look at it every day and it's eye level and, right. and it look pretty from the front and the back. And yes. Yeah. So Sh that shouldn't it be something beautiful? Yeah. 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 Susan, this has been a great topic, and I want to thank our WAM group for such specific questions that they asked that really helped you to put everything all together. So everything that we talked about, there will be links to it in the show notes, but there really will be a link to Susan's blog, which makes it really easy to see all of this, because so, she'll have photographs. Um, and if you are listening to this podcast and thinking, darn it, I should have gone to YouTube to listen to it, there will be a link to YouTube right at the beginning of the show notes so that you can um, watch, watch slash listen there. Yeah, it's so different to do a podcast that's visual. Yeah, yeah. but it's been fun. To, I know that a lot of what we're covering on 30 Minutes with Workroom Tech is visual. Yeah. And so a few people had said, oh, can you do this? And your blog does, you do a great job of showing pictures and things like that. But sometimes people like to follow along. I'm going to hold up a thing. I forgot to show these little rings with the hooks. Oh, on. they're very cool. Yeah. They cool. Now you absolutely have to watch <laughs> to see what we think is cool. <laughs> oh, I just had all this stuff. It's like, we need more time. I had D rings. I'm like, you know, if you need a bigger ring. Yeah. If it's a heavier. <laughs> Yeah, have your tie back anyway. Okay. All right, that's it. I'm stepping Ooh, in. All right. My my brain is going. I have to make some new winter treatments for my bedroom. I'm thinking I might have to put some tie backs on there. Oh, fantastic. That'd yeah. be great. I'll, I'll take pictures if I do. Susan, thank you. thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Bye.